Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily as we strive to bring you the latest developments in the global automotive industry. And just to show you how global it is becoming, General Motors announced it'll be the first automaker to start selling new cars in Myanmar. That's the country that used to be known as Burma. Until recently, the country faced international sanctions for its human rights violations. But with a democratically elected government now taking hold, the economy is opening up. Myanmar has a population of over 60 million people. GM will only sell the Chevrolet brand there, at least for now. And Peugeot announced it's going to start selling cars in Mongolia, which has a population of less than 3 million people. Peugeot says it will sell fully loaded versions of its highest priced cars there. You know, automakers are looking in every nook and cranny around the world in their search for new customers. As autonomous cars come closer to reality, there's a growing concern about hackers being able to take control of those cars. At a recent technology conference in Germany I attended, I asked Bosch executives how they plan to harden autonomous cars to prevent hacker attacks. They told me Bosch has a multi-layered strategy. The first line of defense starts with the traffic servers that are feeding information into the cars. They need robust firewalls. The second line of defense is developing a dual electronic architecture in cars. One that only operates the controls in the car and a different system that operates the infotainment systems. And the third line of defense is encrypting both of those systems. What a world we live in when we have to worry about hackers taking control of our cars. But it is good to know the auto industry is working on staying ahead of this potential problem. And another sign that Tesla is becoming a legit car company, the EV maker will start trading shares on the NASDAQ next week. Bloomberg reports Tesla will be added to the NASDAQ 100 index, which tracks the biggest companies on the exchange. As you know, Tesla's stock has skyrocketed on the New York Stock Exchange this year, which closed yesterday at over $120 per share before this announcement. And in other EV-related news, Nissan announced it will add quick charging stations at more than 100 of its dealers in the U.S. by April of next year. The company is partnering with AeroVironment, which will build and install the quick chargers. The stations can charge a depleted leaf to about 80% capacity in only 30 minutes. If EPA estimates are correct, the new Corvette Stingray will be the most fuel-efficient sports car on the market. It rates the 2014 model with the 7-speed manual transmission at 17 miles per gallon city and 29 highway. Or, for our friends across the pond, that's about 14 liters per 100 kilometer city and about 8 liters per 100 kilometers highway. Not too shabby for a car with 455 horsepower that will start around $55,000. EPA estimates for the Stingray with the six-speed automatic will be coming out soon. But man, if they would just stop dribbling out information about this car and let us drive the dang thing. One of the highlights at this fall's Frankfurt Motor Show may be a brand new Opel. The company is reviving the Monza nameplate with a new concept car. It's said to focus on efficiency and connectivity with its, and I quote, groundbreaking powertrain solution. And its infotainment system represents, and I quote again, a quantum leap forward in development. Although they didn't elaborate on what those points mean. At least we get to see what the car looks like. Well, just the front end. But from this angle, it looks great. We kind of think it looks like a tamer version of Acura's new NSX. And by the way, that's Thomas Neumann next to that car. He's the new head of Opel. Hey, coming up next, we're going to take a look at the newest version of the biggest moneymaker for Mercedes, the 2014 E-Class. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. The E-Class is an important car for Mercedes. Based on its sales volume and profit margin, it puts more money to the bottom line than any other passenger car in Mercedes lineup. In the U.S. last year, the company sold over 60,000 of them, which is about 20% of its U.S. sales. Here's Seamus McElroy with a look at the new model. The 2014 Mercedes-Benz E-Class isn't a completely all-new vehicle, but the company considers it a significant refresh compared to the previous model. That's because there's a new powertrain, technology, and styling. For 2014, the E-Class gets some substantial redesign. Uh, so if you look at that from the A-pillar forward, you, it looks, it's, you'd think it's an all-new car because essentially everything that you see, whether it's the hood, grille, headlamp design, everything is all new up front. So you really do see a striking new design uh, that fits really well into the Mercedes-Benz lineup. So that sheet metal, that uh, the changes continue, the rear door has been redesigned, and also at the rear of the car, uh, new bumper design, new tail lamps, and also the, the chrome outlets uh, for the exhaust have also been redesigned. So something substantial, that's why we're actually not using the facelift term, uh, because it's such a substantial thing, just it's, a, it's a, what we consider a redesign, uh, because the sheet metal on the outside, Compared also on the inside, some really nice upgrades, uh, higher quality materials, fit and finish, new instrument cluster, uh, some updates to the command system, really some nice things from just the aesthetic point of view. Mercedes also loaded up the 2014 E-Class with a number of different safety features it refers to as intelligent drive. So it's stereo cameras, or what we call stereoscopic vision, the front of the car, it includes two cameras which are mounted just inside the windshield, which face forward and give a sense of what's going on, can actually uh, give a 3D image and the car then can process the situation ahead, allowing it to take, let's say, corrective action or braking action to avoid an accident. So this is an all new, it's a first for Mercedes-Benz, it's a first in the industry. We combine those stereoscopic cameras with our radar systems, so we have short and long range radar systems which we then combine those two together which give an overall uh, assessment of what's going on around the car and a lot of new safety features that we can give because we can now assess the traffic situation in front of the car and take corrective action for that. In addition to that, we now have also rear-facing radar systems. So this is an also an, another first for Mercedes-Benz and in the industry to have a rear-facing radar system that can assess the possibility of a dangerous, let's say, rear-end collision and prepare the car accordingly to try to avoid any injury resulting from that. The 2014 E-Class offers a number of different powertrain choices, a hybrid, a new four-cylinder diesel, and two gas engines, a 3.5-liter V6, and a 4.6 liter V8. The engines are mated to a 7-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters and also include stop-start technology. I test drove the 3.5 liter V6 sedan with direct injection and all-wheel drive, what Mercedes refers to as formatic. I found it to be very smooth and refined. It is comfortable to ride in and has impressive acceleration and braking. The fuel economy for that model, including the wagon version, is 19 miles per gallon in the city and 29 on the highway. The wagon, the sedan, and the hybrid are all available now while the diesel and AMG versions will be released later this summer in the U.S. Starting prices range from $51,400 for the diesel and up to over $100,000 for the AMG version. The E350 4Matic sedan that we drove starts at $54,400. Hey, before we go, remember to join us this Thursday night for AutoLine After Hours. Our guest will be Art Anderson, the chief engineer on the Fiat 500L. And what a surprisingly good little car that is. And I really look forward to this show. So join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for the best insider information in the business. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and please tune in again tomorrow.